Welcome, my friends, to The Catholic Reason, a radio show produced by St. Michael Catholic Radio, where we think through various claims made by the Catholic Church concerning issues of faith, morality, and culture, and provide reasons behind those claims. My name is Carlo Broussard, and I'm a staff apologist and speaker for Catholic Answers and a member of the Chancery Evangelization Team at the Diocese of Tulsa in eastern Oklahoma. In today's episode, we're going to do something a little different than what we've done in previous episodes. In previous episodes, we've focused primarily on issues that come up when Catholics are having conversations with Protestants. In today's episode, we're going to reflect on an issue or a question that often comes up when Christians are having conversations with atheists and or agnostics. And the question is whether science can eliminate God. Now, the Catholic claim here is no, science cannot eliminate God. And given the title of the show, The Catholic Reason, we want to provide some reasons for that claim. Now, I'd like to start with a joke. Normally, I don't tell jokes when it comes to theology and philosophy, but I just can't help myself this time. So please bear with me. It has a point. And given my Cajun background, it's going to be a joke about those two crazy Cajuns, Boudreaux and Thibodeau. (laughs) Hopefully you guys listening and or watching the show are familiar with the fictional characters uh, that take prominence in all Cajun jokes, Boudreaux and Thibodeau, right? So let me tell you a story. One morning, Boudreaux left for work, heading down that long country gravel road with rice fields on both the left and the right of the road. And that's what it's like in Southern Louisiana, right? Which is where I grew up and where I come from near Lafayette. As Boudreaux was driving in his pickup truck, listening to some good old Cajun music, or maybe even a talk by this raging Cajun apologist here, Carlo (laughs) Broussard, yours truly, he saw his best friend Thibodeau and he called him Tib standing out in the rice field. And Boudreaux thought to himself, man, what that boy doing out there standing in this rice field like a fool? He must have did something to tick off his wife, Clotilde. She must have kicked him out the house last night. Who knows? May I tell you, that boy, he's crazy. (laughs) So later that day, when Boudreaux's coming back down the country gravel road as he got off of work, He sees Thibodeau standing, still standing in his rice field, right? He's still there. And so Boudreaux slams on his brakes, you know, just going down that gravel road, uh, threw that truck in reverse, and he backed up. And he rolled down his window, and he had to do it manually because, you know, Boudreaux didn't have any automatic windows in that country truck there. And he hollered out, hey, Tib. (laughs) So Thibodeau hollers back. Oh, hey, boo. That's what Thibodeau called Boudreaux. Man, it's good to see you, Sha. And then Boudreaux hollers back. Man, Tib, what you doing out there? I saw you this morning. You still here this afternoon. And Thibodeau hollered back. Oh, boo, I'm just trying to win the Nobel Prize. And Boudreaux, he scratches his head. He's a bit puzzled and he hollers. Man, Tib. How you figure you're going to win a Nobel Prize out there? You're not even educated. And Thibodeau says, Mebu, they told me I have to be outstanding in my field. (laughs) Now, I think this joke is a great lead into the topic for today's episode. And for next week's episode, we're going to divide it up into two parts here. Why Science Can't Eliminate God. Because the cultural narrative that science has buried God is premised on the idea that many who are outstanding in the field of science have cast a negative light on the God question, hence the point of the joke, right? Generally speaking, we can call this idea that science has eliminated God scientism. But it's important to draw a distinction between a weak version of scientism and a strong version. The late Stephen Hawking articulated the weak version succinctly in a 2010 Larry King Live interview. 
in which my former boss at the Magis Center of Reason and Faith, Father Robert Spitzer, participated in. And Hawking said, quote, God may exist, but science can explain the universe without the need for a creator. For Hawking, there's no need to appeal to God to explain the universe because science can get the job done. This belief assumes that modern science has the capacity to give an exhaustive explanation of the material world without an appeal to God. As such, for many, every new advance of natural science is seen as one more nail in the divine coffin. Others have gone even further in stating that the appeal to God is simply irrational, what we might call the strong version of scientism. For example, in a 2013 Cambridge Union Society debate with Rowan Williams, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, popular atheist Richard Dawkins claimed that religion is a betrayal of the intellect. And he asserted that appealing to God to explain the universe is, quote, a phony substitute for an explanation and peddles false explanations where real explanations could have been offered. Lawrence Krauss is another example. In a 2017 interview at Vox.com, Krauss states that why questions are ultimately meaningless and that they're really how questions, and thus they're all scientific questions. Concerning religion, he says, quote, religion doesn't explain anything. The best religion can do is say that God did it, which is code for I don't want to think about it. Now, for Dawkins and Krauss, science is the only thing that counts as a real explanation. The underlying assumption being that science alone gives us genuine knowledge. This being the case, any metaphysics or philosophy that would lead to knowledge of God is not worth considering. Even Hawking, in his 2010 book, The Grand Design, tipped his hat at this version of scientism or strong scientism saying this quote philosophy is dead and then he continues scientists have become the bearers of the torch of discovery in our quest for knowledge so you can see there in these quotes from hawking dawkins and kraus there are two different kinds of scientism this idea that science has buried god you got the weak version which says that God may exist, but we really don't need to appeal to him in explaining the universe because science can get the job done. And then the strong version of scientism says the very appeal to God as an explanation for the universe is a betrayal of the human intellect. In other words, it's irrational. It violates our dignity as rational animals or human beings. And that assumes science alone gives us genuine knowledge. And so the appeal to any form of religious knowledge would be something that betrays the human intellect outside the boundaries of what can give us real knowledge and thus ought to be rejected. So what are we to make of strong scientism? Is scientific knowledge the only real form of knowledge? That's the question we need to ask. Should we not even embark on the philosophical quest for God since the God question goes beyond the boundaries of modern scientific inquiry? Strong scientism would say, yes, uh, uh, we should reject the quest for God, right? Uh, we shouldn't embark on the philosophical quest for God. It would say, yes, scientific knowledge is the only real form of knowledge. If Dawkins, Krauss, and Hawking are correct, and any knowledge of God that I arrive at by way of philosophy is not real knowledge, then such inquiry would be futile. Why would I pursue knowledge? that's merely subjective and has no bearing on reality. If strong scientism is true, were true, then I might as well conclude that with Dawkins and his compadres there that God probably doesn't exist since science can't even detect him. And in that way, we could see how science would eliminate God. Now, even if we don't want to go so far as to reject religious knowledge entirely, but simply want to take the milder approach of weak scientism and say with Hawking in that 2010 debate on Larry King live show that science is sufficient to explain the universe without the need for a creator, we have to ask the question, well, is science even up to such a task? 
could it even provide such an exhaustive explanation of the universe such that we would no longer need to appeal to God? Now, in today's episode of The Catholic Reason, we're only going to tackle strong scientism, the view that scientific knowledge is the only real kind of knowledge. Our Catholic claim is the contradictory of strong scientism, namely, scientific knowledge is not the only real kind of knowledge. We're going to defend this claim by showing why strong scientism is false, and we're going to do so by employing four different strategies. But before we get to look at the strategies, I need to address an initial objection that might arise before we even begin our refutation of strong scientism. So let's go ahead and state the objection first, and then we're going to have to stop for our first break here. And I don't want to dive too far into our response, and that way we have a clean start on the other side of the break. But here's the objection. The objection goes as follows. Why should I even care about refuting scientism? I've never really heard anyone make this claim before, right? So, in other words, is this just a straw man? You know, do we really need to consider uh, refuting scientism or the strong view of scientism? Why should I even care? Well, first of all, it's not really a straw man, just right off the bat, because we already gave some quotes from Dawkins and Krauss who illustrate or give examples and articulate the strong view of scientism. So it's definitely worth considering, and those sorts of individuals uh, have influence on people and their thoughts. And so we pitched that idea, these two versions of scientism, before the break, and I mentioned how we're going to look at four strategies as to how we can refute strong scientism. We're only focusing on strong scientism in today's episode. But before we look at those strategies, there's an initial objection that I want to address, which I began to address before the break, and that is, why should we even care about refuting scientism? Uh, is it just a straw man? Is it even worth our time? Well, as I mentioned before the break, top-notch scientists assert that scientism is true. And we gave some quotes from Dawkins and Krauss who embody this very idea in their articulation, in their, uh, let me say this, in their rejection of religious knowledge and appeals to God as explanations for the universe. And given their status as experts in their fields, many people trust their judgments. If they're going around saying that scientific knowledge is the only real kind of knowledge, well then many people are going to believe them, and many people have. Scientism uh, does manifest itself within contemporary atheism. And since these guys, you know, Krauss and Dawkins, are highly influential for some, we should care about refuting scientism. We should also care about refuting scientism because we care about what is true. Many atheists claim scientism accurately describes reality. If we care about truth, we care about reality, well then we should want to know whether the claim of scientism is true or not. And thirdly, strong scientism is often an implicit assumption when atheists reject God's existence. Often, atheists reject God's existence because they don't think there's any evidence for God. But when pressed as to which kind of evidence they're looking for, you discover they're only looking for scientific evidence. Now, why would they only be looking for scientific evidence for God? Well, the answer is that they're trained to think scientific knowledge is the only real kind of knowledge. And so that makes sense why you would be looking for scientific knowledge for God, if that's your assumption, right? So although it's true that some atheists might not articulate strong scientism explicitly, it's often an implicit assumption and thereby needs to be dealt with. Okay, so now on to our four strategies for refuting strong scientism. Strategy number one, is that scientism is that we can show that scientism is self-referentially incoherent. That's just a fancy way of saying that it's self-refuting. When you take the principle of the scientism view and apply it to itself, 
the bottom line is it can't pass its own test. So consider the statement, scientific knowledge is the only real form of knowledge. That's the proposition that we're going to consider. That statement itself is not scientific knowledge. That's to say we can't determine its truth value using the modern methods of science. To make this clear, we could ask our atheist friend that we're having a conversation with these sorts of questions. And I ask you, listening, with what sense can we observe the truth of this statement? Which statement? The statement of scientism. Scientific knowledge is the only real form of knowledge. Or you might ask this question, what scientific tests can you perform to prove its truth value? What's the mathematical equation that expresses the quantitative aspects of this belief? The absurdity of these questions shows that the truth value of scientism is not empirically verifiable or quantifiably measurable. And thus, it's not subject to the methods of modern science. We can't know whether scientism is true or false using the methods of modern science. But this causes a serious problem for the believer in scientism, at least the strong version of scientism. It means that scientism is not real knowledge. Here's another question that you can ask in conversation or ask yourself. If the methods of modern science can't verify the truth of scientism, well then, how can scientism be real knowledge? And if it's not real knowledge, well then, why would we believe it? If I may geek out just a bit with some logic, consider this syllogism here. And this hopefully will make it clear for you. Premise one, any knowledge that is outside the boundaries of scientific knowledge is not real knowledge. That's what scientism says, right? Premise two, scientism itself is knowledge that is outside the boundaries of scientific knowledge. And so therefore the conclusion, scientism is not real knowledge. Do you see it? <laughs> Can you, do you intellectually see it? If not, you might have to get my book, Prepare the Way, Overcoming Obstacles to God, the Gospel, and the Church, which is available at, Catholic, at the Catholic Answers Bookstore at shop.catholic.com, in which I present this argument. And so even if you did get it, you can still get my book. <laughs> but if you didn't get it and you need to read it to think through it, I would highly recommend that because you kind of have to see it on paper, see the premises of the syllogism and the logical flow of the argument. But just imagine, you know, the claim of scientism. Boundary, you have certain boundaries. Any knowledge that goes outside those boundaries of scientific knowledge, that knowledge ain't real. It's not real knowledge, right? Well, the belief of scientism itself is outside those boundaries of scientific knowledge because there's no modern method of science that you can employ to arrive at the conclusion that scientism is true. And But if scientism is knowledge outside the boundaries of scientific knowledge, according to its own principle, it ain't real knowledge. And if it's not real knowledge, then we ought to reject it. So you see how when you take the principle of scientism, that scientific knowledge alone is real knowledge, and you apply that principle to scientism itself, it actually makes scientism not real knowledge. It refutes itself. And if it's a self-refuting proposition, <laughs> well then, it's contrary to reason. And if it's contrary to reason, my friends, we ought not to accept it. Okay, so strategy one, show that scientism is self-referentially incoherent. That's the clearest way in which we can refute strong scientism. Uh, but there are other strategies as well that are worth highlighting and learning and thinking through. So a second strategy for refuting strong scientism is to show that it actually undermines modern science itself as a rational form of inquiry, which is interesting, right? Because scientism is trying to exalt scientific inquiry as a rational form of inquiry. It's trying to uphold science as a rational form of inquiry, but scientism actually undermines science as a rational form of inquiry. So it's actually self-refuting in a second way. It's not only self-referentially incoherent when you apply the principle to itself, 
and thereby refute it refutes itself but it's also self-refuting because it's undermining undermining the very thing that is trying to uphold and establish and that is scientific knowledge itself consider that science presupposes various assumptions that are not subject to scientific verification so for example that there is an external world outside the mind of scientists that the world consists of cause and effect patterns and that the human intellect is capable of uncovering these patterns because the methods of modern science presuppose these things they cannot possibly attempt to justify them okay science takes for granted that there is a world for scientists to come to know and that there are certain cause and effect patterns that the mind of scientists can come to know as well so such a justification of those things could only come by getting outside science altogether but as the philosopher dr edward Fazer argues in his book five proofs of the existence of god such an quote extra scientific vantage point would falsify the claim that science alone gives us a rational means of investigating objective reality so notice that extra scientific vantage point right of knowing things that science cannot give us knowledge about namely that there is the external world the cause and effect patterns and the minds of scientists are able to know those patterns that would would that tells us right away that science cannot be the only rational means of investigating objective reality there must be some other means of investigating objective reality other than modern science because modern science presupposes this kind of knowledge and the knowledge of these kinds of things which science has to presuppose in order to get up off the ground in the first place and because science presupposes these things science cannot possibly justify those things or give us knowledge about those things right but if that's the question if that's the case in view of scientism how can science be a legitimate form of rational inquiry if its presupposed assumptions are not the product of scientific inquiry because remember scientism says strong view of scientism says scientific knowledge is the only real form of knowledge well knowledge about these things that science presupposes is not scientific knowledge and so we would have to conclude according to scientism that the things science presupposes in order to even get off the ground and begin a functioning as an enterprise a, a discipline in the first place is not real knowledge we can't have real knowledge of those things which of course undermines science itself as a rational form of inquiry so consider those who profess scientism seek to exalt science but in reality they actually undermine science those who embrace scientism are going to have to make a choice you either accept scientism and reject science or accept science and reject scientism you can't have them both okay so that's our second strategy scientism undermines science itself as a rational form of inquiry now a third strategy for refuting scientism is to show that it undermines the human mind itself and that's that's not going to be good right because if the human mind is undermined <laughs> and you can't have a human mind well then you can't be doing science right without the human mind there can be no argument for scientism itself again philosopher edward Fazer argues uh, this in his article blinded by scientism scientism says that anything that cannot be empirically verified at least a strong view of scientism says that anything that cannot be empirically verified or quantifiably measured is not real but as Fazer points out the mind is not subject to empirical verification and is non-quantifiable right so the mind is is falling outside the boundaries of the methods of modern science but according to strong view of scientism anything outside the boundaries of the methods of modern science isn't real it's not real knowledge and so we would never be able to come to have real knowledge of the human mind according to this strong view of scientism here's how phaser 
uh, puts this strategy or this argument. He writes this, uh, and this is, again, coming from his article, Blinded by Scientism. Uh, the mental activities that occur even in the practice of science, such as the formulation of hypotheses, the weighing of evidence, technical concepts, and the construction of cause and effect patterns, cannot be described in the language of mathematics. There is no microscope or telescope that can show us the exist existence of mental thoughts, although some machines are able to detect the effects that thoughts can have on brain activity. Therefore, on the grounds of scientism, and I would specify here the strong view of scientism, the mind cannot be real. So you might think of this question, ask yourself this question, how can you argue for scientism when such argumentation presupposes or assumes the very thing scientism logically denies, namely the mind, right? So just to put it frankly, you need the mind to argue, argue for scientism. But scientism logically entails that there is no mind, or at least we, can know, we can't know that the mind exists. So if our friend in conversation who embraces a strong view of scientism, if he doesn't want to go that far, he's going to have to reject scientism. If he doesn't want to reject the mind, he's going to have to reject scientism. But if he chooses to follow the logic of scientism and reject the mind outright, perhaps viewing human thoughts as mere physical processes of the brain, we need to press our friend there in conversation to see the absurdity of the conclusion. Your conclusion that scientism is true, or the conclusion that scientism is true, would be the result of random accidental processes of the brain. Right, So if we just want to hold to our thoughts being physical processes of the brain, well then the conclusion that scientism is true, that's just simply a result of random accidental processes of the brain. And if that's the case, well then why should I believe that conclusion? Right? Why should I believe the result of random accidental processes of the brain? Since scientism denies the reality of the human mind, which is needed to argue in support of scientism itself, scientism is therefore not reasonable. So we should reject scientism because scientism rejects the human mind. <laughs> the assumption being we don't want to reject the human mind, right? So now we have three strategies to refute strong scientism. Number one, scientism is self-referentially incoherent in the most evident way, saying that scientific knowledge is the only real form of knowledge, but that belief itself is not scientific knowledge, therefore it's not real knowledge. Second strategy, show that scientism undermines science itself as a rational form of inquiry because the methods of modern science cannot lead us or give us knowledge about the things that science presupposes, namely that there is a world outside the mind of scientists, cause and effect patterns in that world, and that the mind of scientists are able to know the cause and effect patterns. Since those things are not given to us by the methods of modern science, according to scientism, that would not be real knowledge. And thus you would have non-real knowledge as the very foundation in order to do science in the first place, which is absurd. And then a, fourth, a third strategy is scientism undermines the reality of the human mind itself, pushing the human mind outside the boundaries of what the methods of modern science can give us. And according to scientism, that would mean the mind is not real and we can't have real knowledge of it. Okay, so a fourth strategy here in refuting strong scientism is that scientism confuses methodology with ontology. And I know that's some big highfalutin philosophical words. Just hang with me here, right? Okay, so the believer in scientism confuses methodology, the method we use to discover reality, with ontology, reality itself. Okay, so methodology, the method we use to discover what's real. Ontology, the study of being or reality itself. Once the confusion is corrected, the obstacle shrinks. Okay, so check it out. You can begin by drawing out the principle that scientism, a principle that scientism assumes. People who think that science is the only rational form of inquiry do so because they assume that what science cannot detect, 
doesn't exist. So if science can't detect it, it's not real, right? That's the assumption here. They view such things as mere superstition or imaginative constructs. So to quote uh, Richard Dawkins, he, again, he argues uh, in the third way, in third, excuse me, third way magazine, volume 25, number five in June of 2003. Here's what he says. Father Christmas and the tooth fairy are part of the charm of childhood. So is God. Some of us grow out of all three. So the, impl the implication there is that, hey, science can't detect these things. And so therefore these things are real. These things aren't real. But this line of reasoning is fallacious. It doesn't, it's contrary to reason. Consider the following scenario. And this example is taken from Dr. Edward Fazer in his book, Scholastic Metaphysics, a Contemporary Metaphysics, published in 2014. Let's say we set out to find plastic cups on the beach. And to do so, we're going to use a metal detector. And so we spend all day scanning the beach. And lo and behold, we come up empty. We don't detect any plastic cups. So ask yourself this question. Is it reasonable to conclude that plastic cups aren't real because the metal detector can't detect plastic cups? Now, of course, hopefully you can see that the metal detector's failure to detect plastic cups says nothing about whether or not plastic cups exist. It's simply a result of the limitations of the method. So now we're in a position to make the application to God and science. If it's not reasonable to conclude that plastic cups don't exist because the metal detector can't detect plastic cups, well then, isn't it also unreasonable to conclude that God doesn't exist because science can't detect God? Hopefully you can see the flow of the logic and the answer is yes. If you don't see the connection, well then you might have to think through that example again. Think of it like this. Our inability to detect God using science says nothing about whether he exists, but it merely reveals the limitations of science. It can only be used to discover those things empirically verifiable and quantifiably measurable. In order to arrive at knowledge of the things that science can't detect, such as God, we're going to have to use other methods, such as philosophy and or divine revelation. To say otherwise, to claim that whatever we can't know by science isn't real, is to let the method dictate what is real rather than letting reality dictate the proper method for studying it. And we've been going through a variety of strategies that we can employ in order to refute what we call a strong view of scientism, this idea that scientific knowledge is the only real form of knowledge, and whatever the methods of modern science cannot bring us to knowledge about, well, then it ain't real. And so, first of all, we pointed out that scientism is self-referentially incoherent. That would be one strategy. Secondly, scientism undermines science itself as a rational form of inquiry. Thirdly, scientism undermines the reality of the human mind itself, given that we want to preserve the human mind. We ought to reject scientism. And then, right before we went to our last break, I was wrapping up our reflection on our fourth strategy, and that is explain how scientism confuses methodology with ontology, confusing the method that we use to arrive at knowledge of reality and reality itself. Scientism conflates these two. Scientism focused, strong view of scientism focuses on the scientific method the modern scientific method of coming to know reality and confuses that method of knowing reality with reality itself, assuming that what science cannot tell us about, if science cannot detect it, if science cannot lead us to knowledge about it, well then whatever we're talking about, it ain't real. And so it's confusing the limitations of the scientific method, the modern scientific method, and coming to know about reality and reality itself. And we use the example coming from Dr. Edward Fazer of using the metal detector, trying to detect plastic cups. Just because we cannot detect plastic cups on the beach with the metal detector doesn't mean plastic cups don't exist. It simply manifests the limitations of the method, of the detecting device. The metal detector only detects meth, uh, metal. And so anything outside the boundaries of metal, plastic cups, it's not going to detect. 
Similarly, the methods of modern science are only ordered toward detecting things that are empirically verifiable and quantifiably measurable. And so obviously, whatever goes beyond those boundaries, science is not going to be able to detect. But it would be fallacious and unreasonable to conclude that just because science cannot detect it, well, therefore it ain't real. And so this is yet another problem with this strong view of scientism confusing methodology with ontology. There, uh, just, just because science is limited in what it can know about reality, that doesn't mean what science tells us is the only thing that makes up reality. There could be other things that make up reality that science is just limited in coming to know, and we're going to have to take some other tools out the tool shed in order to come to know those things, right? So an atheist may reject God as the best explanation for the universe on the basis of bad arguments, okay? So maybe there's some arguments for God, and an atheist says, well, I don't think those arguments are good arguments for God's existence. But he cannot reasonably reject theism on the grounds that it's not scientific knowledge. To do so would be, to quote Dawkins here, a betrayal of the human intellect because of all of the incoherencies and logical problems embedded within the strong view of scientism itself. Now, you might be thinking, well, if scientism is so incoherent and unreasonable, as we've explained in this episode with, with our four strategies, why do so many brilliant minds ascribe to it? And that's a fair question. That's a good question. The answer is that they're hypnotized by the success of science. At least so it seems to be. This is the argument the atheist philosopher Alex Rosenberg gives in his book, An Atheist Guide to Reality. For Rosenberg, it's the unparalleled predictive and technological success of science in all its modern forms that gives one good reason to think it's the only source of knowledge about what is real. So the idea here is we're using science, it's successful. I come to know this, I come to know that. I'm using science to know this other thing and it's successful. And we kind of, and some kind of begin to think, well, if science is not successful in telling us about something, well, then I guess that thing ain't real, right? But is this a good argument? You know, the answer no is no, and it's not a good argument, right? The success of science does not is not a good reason to think that the things that science can detect are the only things that are real, okay? And this is as bad an argument as saying the unparalleled success of metal detectors detecting coins and other metallic objects gives us good reason to think that metal detectors are the only source of knowledge about what is real. Right? So just let that parallel sink in there. Remember, strong view of scientism is saying, okay, the success of science in detecting what is empirically verifiable and quantifiably measurable gives us good reason to think that only empirical things exist, only things subject to empirical investigation exists, and only things that are quantifiably measurable exist. Well, that's just as fallacious as saying, because metal detectors are so good at detecting metallic objects, only metallic objects exist. We recognize this line of reasoning to be absurd because we know that metal detectors are only ordered to detecting metallic elements in the natural world. And just because metal detectors are successful in doing that, in detecting metal, it doesn't follow that there's nothing else to the natural world besides metal. The same absurdity is present in Rosenberg's argument for scientism. He argues that science is our only source of knowledge about what is real because nothing parallels it in its predicted technological success and its explanatory scope. But the modern methods of science are by nature restricted to detecting things within the boundaries of physical reality. So, of course, science is going to be one lone success story if the only evidence that you bring to support the success of science is the knowledge it gives us of the physical world. That's what science does. So you're restricting, you know, our, our knowledge of only the physical world. Well, of course, science is going to be successful in detecting things of the physical world because that's what it's ordered to do. But just because these methods are successful in giving us knowledge about the physical world, 
it doesn't follow that these methods are the only source of knowledge about what is real. There may be other things that constitute reality that simply goes beyond what the modern methods of science can detect. Just like there may be other things besides metallic objects that go beyond what the metal detector can detect. And of course, we know there are other things besides metal. And so therefore, we know that we're going to need some other tools to find the plastic cups like a shovel. And so now somebody might counter and say, well, you know, precisely that. We know there are other things besides metal like plastic cups. And so therefore, we know that the metal detector is simply limited in what it can detect. But our argument here is saying, listen, you can't say science is the only way by which we come to know what is real simply because it's successful in detecting physical things. There may be other things besides physical things that we need other tools to come to know, like the plastic cups or other than metallic objects that go beyond what the metal detector can detect. Now, whether there are other things besides physical things well, then that's something that we're going to have to investigate, right? But the success of science in and of itself cannot be a good reason to think that there is nothing else besides what science and the methods of modern science can detect. That science can't detect such things, things that go beyond what is empirically verifiable or quantifiably measurable, says nothing whether or not such things exist. It's merely a manifestation of the inherent limitations of the detecting powers of science. That is what we can know for sure, that science is limited as to what it can detect things within the physical universe. With regard to the things that might be existing beyond the physical world, science is simply silent. And those who practice the modern methods of science ought to simply be silent when it comes to those things qua scientists, insofar as they are scientists. Now, they might also be philosophers and they can speak about those things that go beyond the physical world, putting on their philosophy cap and using their philosophical training. But insofar as they are trained as scientists within the modern disciplines of science, they ought to remain silent when it comes to those things. So, my friends, we are now out of time for today's show of the Catholic Reason, this episode of the Catholic Reason. And just to summarize, we've seen why we should reject strong scientism, the view that scientific knowledge is the only real kind of knowledge. We looked at four strategies. Strong scientism is self-referentially incoherent. Secondly, strong scientism undermines science itself as a legitimate form of rational inquiry which is interesting because science as a legitimate form of rational inquiry was the very thing that scientism is trying to underscore and uphold. Third strategy, strong scientism undermines the reality of the human mind itself. And that's interesting because you need the human mind in order to even argue for the truth of scientism. And finally, strong scientism confuses methodology with ontology, confusing the method by which we come to know reality and reality itself. Well, my friends, thank you so much for listening to The Catholic Reason. Again, a production of St. Michael Catholic Radio. Remember, the show is podcasted. You can download the show through whichever podcast platform you use by subscribing to the Eastern Oklahoma Catholic Podcast. You can also access the archived episodes at corlobrusor.com under the audio tab. I invite you to join me again next week here on St. Michael Catholic Radio as we continue looking at Catholic claims and the reasons behind them. Tell a friend, and I'll talk to you then. God bless.